Now, tomorrow evening, the South African Council of Churches, in association with the Foshosa Foundation and the University of South Africa, will host a public lecture on a topic, A Christian Voice in a World in Conflict, at the UNISA main campus in Pretoria. Now, Professor Jerry Pele, uh, who is the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, will be the main speaker. He joins us now via Teams, alongside Bishop Malu Simpomloana, who is the General Secretary of the South African Council of churches. Thank you so much uh, for your time this hour on the program. Perhaps let's start with uh, Professor Pele. Now, this is an interesting question, you know, in a time of conflict in the Middle East, now a Christian voice in a world in conflict. How are you interpreting uh, this topic, topic Prof? Uh, good morning to you and to the viewers. Thank you for the question. I'm going to be having a very broad look at the scenario in terms of the world picture. Uh, trying to paint the picture of conflict as we see it in different parts of the world. But of course, trying to focus on the main issues, particularly now in Israel-Palestine and also uh, in Ukraine and Russia. But not dispersing facts that even in Africa, there are very serious areas of conflict, and I will be making mention of some of those. And the intention is to actually try to show that we're living in a time of real serious crisis. The world is in a mess. There is far too much of violence, and conflicts seem to be the, the in thing today. People are not necessarily talking about peace and not wanting to actually engage in dialogues for peace. And one wonders what is going on. So I will be doing some sense of analysis of that kind of views and trying to express how we see this, not just from a Christian perspective point of view, but from a multiple different areas in terms of analyzing economics, politics, social issues, and so forth. So it'll be a broad scale reflection on what is happening in the world right now, but mainly dealing with issues of conflict, because that's what I've been asked to focus on. And Prof, I actually want us uh, to zoom in, you know, in a 21st century that uh, encourages inclusivity. You know, what is a Christian voice? The Christian voice has to embrace inclusivity. There's diversities of experiences in life. There are many people who have different views and perceptions about things. And one wonders how can we reconcile this? And Christians particularly uh, talk about reconciled diversity. And how do we understand reconciled diversity in the context of embracing uh, different experiences, different backgrounds, different cultures, different political views, different economic experiences? So the inclusivity is critical if we want to have stability and peace in our society and in the world. And I think sometimes we just don't know how to do that. And that's part of the problem. And faith plays a very important issue in this. Religions can come in and, and talk about peace and foster peace. Unfortunately, I think even religions have become complicit. And I want us to bring in the bishop now into the conversation. And Bishop Mbumalan, I think in your statement, you say that you seek to provide a lens through which to address and navigate the challenges of our times. And do you think the Israeli-Hamas war has challenged Christians all over the world to introspect on their beliefs? Oh, most definitely. I don't think it's only about Christians. <laughs> they... The, 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 the Israeli the Palestinian the problem um, is actually it is just where the microcosm of all this because if what Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, even though Christianity is a minority in that environment, uh, it is a significant one because that is the birthplace of the, the Christian faith. And therefore, the Palestinians, the, the only indigenous Christians in the Holy Land are actually Palestinians. Um, and, and they are the same Arabs that the Book of Earth talks about in chapter 2, verse 11. Uh, that they say, we've never been away, we've always been here. And, uh, and so they are therefore uh, uh, the ones that are having to say, we live with the Jewish faith as well as the Muslim faith. And as Christians, uh, we have to accept that it is important. It is an important role for us. And they are calling on us in the, as Christians in the world to come alongside them to drive for peace in the Holy Land. Yes, and Bishop, and also I just posed this question as well uh, to Professor Pele. Maybe in a 21st century that also encourages inclusivity, what is a Christian voice? Well, 
and uh, you couldn't have asked that question in a in a much more uh, healthy environment for that in South Africa because um, in South Africa before democracy uh, the state believed that it was a Christian state and therefore only provided for the Christian faith in official uh, South Africa but actually uh, since democracy there is a broad inclusivity of all faiths and that is why if uh, you notice all events state events that are opened are opened by prayer from all the faith uh, practices that are in South Africa and that is inclusivity and in fact the the I mean we, we were challenged in the time of COVID uh, because COVID does not care whether you're a Christian Muslim or Jew or Baha'i or whatever other faith uh, it, it does not care it just kills and so we had what we call the religious forum against COVID and that developed a very strong bond amongst us to be able to share experiences, to advise one another, as well as to have joint uh, campaigns uh, for to save lives. And that has led, led us to be able to work together beyond that in what we now call the Interfaith Forum of South Africa. So we have inclusivity. This is one country where you have that uh, much more heavily. And of course, uh, Professor Pillay, as we lay the foundations for tomorrow's lecture, I'm keen on finding out how are you engaging with the developments, of course, in the uh, Israeli-Hamas war? Well, the World Council of Churches has very uh, clearly condemned the war as uh, actually immoral and illegal uh, and has taken a stance in terms of supporting Palestine. The World Council of Churches has always done this over the decades uh, in the continued occupation of, of Palestine. And we stand now to continue that voice in saying what is happening currently and the continued attacks of Israel uh, on, on Palestine, on Hamas in, particularly, in particular, uh, is actually unacceptable. And the number of people who have been killed thus far, over 14,000 I'm told now, and mainly women and children. Uh, these targets of civilians is really mass massacre, and it is unacceptable. So we stand uh, condemning this. We have been very vocal. We have issued many statements, but we have also asked for policy changes to address these issues. So the position of the World Council of Churches is very uh, clear in terms of where we stand as far as this war is concerned. We do not advocate violence. We speak quite strongly against any form of violence, and especially in the context of war, this has to stop. So we have called on Israel to, to uh, bring about a ceasefire. We have actually tried to talk to uh, many different uh, leading authorities in terms of the presidents of different countries to engage, to call for ceasefire. Now, of course, we know that some people are very reluctant to do that, but we have been putting pressure, and the World Council of Churches continues to do that. Uh, we have great uh, opportunity in terms of a world public platform to deal with global issues, just like we did in the days of apartheid in South Africa. Uh, the World Council of Churches was able to put this in a global platform. So we are using that global platform to actually speak about the situation, calling for peace, encouraging dialogue, and saying that ultimately, uh, Israel and Palestine will have to sit down and talk about how do they move forward in terms of securing peace. So the question is, why not do that now instead of later, when thousands and thousands of people have been already killed, when, when the Gaza is totally devastated, and senseless killings continues to happen, why postpone that for later. Let's sit down now, let's talk. So we're putting pressure on governments and authorities that actually play a big role in this, uh, especially the USA, as you would know. And we are saying, get involved, talk about ceasefire, and let's dialogue for peace. And we're hoping and praying that people will listen and be sensible about this particular request in order to stop the continued violence in that part of the world. And of course, you know, uh, this matter, this matter. Go ahead, Bishop. I was saying that this matter uh, is actually in, uppermost in the, uh, on, on the agenda of the South African Council of Churches Central Committee that meets on Monday and Tuesday. 
um, uh, you, you, you might not know that um, the, the SACC has had a commitment since 2019 to help uh, work with the World Council of Churches and the Vatican uh, to bring together uh, the global leaders of the Jewish faith as well as of the Muslim faith to work together for what, what they will call, hopefully, as the three Abrahamic faiths, as a commitment to the peace of Jerusalem. Because the Holy Land is holy not to politicians, but to people of faith. And these three faiths hold the Holy Land as a place of, of a special place in their traditions. And so we want to bring them together to see how far we can go uh, outside of the politics to really focus on what faith communities can achieve together. And we hope that the, similarly, faith communities in South Africa, the Jewish faith and the Muslim faith, would, uh, would be supportive of this. I want to say that today's, um, uh, you know, to today is, is the beginning of the, um, of, of the 16 days of access against violence against women and, and, and children. It, 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 is the, it is the very day in which we should call for the cessation of the killings of women and children in Palestine. It should also be the day on which we remember the pain of those uh, Israelis, um, even if they are fewer, that were killed in the attack by Hamas. And so try to say, can we together find a different way of living and make sure that the future is a future that our children can be proud of? Indeed. And Bishop, please uh, perhaps also provide details on how uh, people can take part virtually. Oh, yes. Uh, they, they can participate virtually through the S to SACC uh, Facebook uh, page. Um, which is official SACC uh, and, and as well as the UNISA and for the for uh, 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 you know, Facebook. Uh, but we're also hoping that um, we will have uh, the presence of the SABC uh, such as your station to be able to give a wider coverage that reaches out to communities across the world, across the country, especially because it, for the first time we have a South African as the general secretary of the World Council of Churches and Professor Pillay, and he's come home for the first time uh, within one year of his being uh, in a uh, 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 in as, as general secretary. We would like to be able to celebrate that. We would like to hear his voice and be able to say, what does this mean for me as a South African in the different faith uh, traditions that we have? And I think that it will be of great value, especially because there's so much of a debate about the Russia, uh, you know, Ukraine uh, conflict, and about the Israel-Palestine conflict, and as well as what's happening in the Sudan and other uh, countries in Africa, where all these matters are matters. You remember that we've got citizens of those countries as well in South Africa, and so it will be important that we can get a broader uh, coverage um, that gets to reach everyone. All right, uh, Bishop Malusi Mbumlwana, the General Secretary of the South African Council of Churches, as well as Professor Jerry Pillay, who is the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us in conversation this hour.